This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Kid Eating Barbecue Company. Mad Kid Eating Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be back at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria in Cary, Ohio this Thursday, 4 to 7 o'clock, for some of that delicious barbecue and bingo. Again, this Thursday, 4 to 7, OLC Shrine Cafeteria for some Mad Canadian barbecue and bingo. Check out his social media for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next on Facebook and Twitter. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a Ohio-based, Marine veteran-owned coffee company. They are based out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is just outside of Toledo. Uh, integrity is the core value of what they do, because what else would you expect, Kyle? Kyle? From, a, from an Ohio-based, veteran, Marine-owned company. Uh, and the integrity goes in both directions. It goes both back to the farmers because all of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. But they also that that integrity then also reaches out then to you, the customers, because all of your beans are fresh roasted. Uh, they're hand roasted. They're micro roasted. They do everything they can to ensure that you're getting the best possible product. So they're, they're taking care of people on both sides of the supply chain because again integrity is at the core of what they do so you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com that is iron bean coffee america's local coffee roaster how's it going everybody in youtube land and in our discord it is here the week has finally come it is hate week jared it is. It is, in fact, that. Um, oh, man, should I? I'm all of a sudden thinking I should have inspected our frame for for the YouTube folk. Our frame that sits around us for M's. I hadn't uh, considered that until just the now. Only, the only one that I can see is our one of our sponsors. Yeah, I don't want to put an X over any of our sponsor logos anyway. I think everything else, I think, I think we're good fans here and we have purposely, Jared, go yeah, along oh, yeah. with me here. We perp, we purposely yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, try yeah. to reduce any and all oh. of those letters. Matthew points out, oh, yeah. we do have a dot com. There is that. Yes. All right. Almost. So, all right. We have two dot. Let, let's, oh let's no, we have like four dot coms. <laughs> all right. Let, let's get into it, Jared. Let's talk about this weekend's game. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I am pumped. I am pumped <laughs> to do today's recording here, Jared. Hate this week. Was a, it is hate week. We had a great game that we're about to talk here. But yeah, feeling good. Feeling good to be home in my normal setup here than oh, being on the road here. <laughs> and the listeners enjoy having your audio quality not be dog crap again. <laughs> yeah. But how are you, Jared? I, I'm not going to complain. Um, Ohio State had a great week on the field. Um, chaos. Chaos had his moments, too. We'll talk about that on the Tuesday episode. Um, yeah, it's a it's a good day. It's a good day to be a Buckeye. Uh, it's a good week to be a Buckeye. Um, you know, we'll talk about this in the Thursday episode. But, man, I, I, I am, am not buying. I am not buying this Michigan has a chance stuff. Vegas only has Ohio State by like seven points. Uh, the mm -hmm. FPI game predictor over at ESPN uh, has Ohio State. I only I think it's like a 61 percent chance to win or something like that. Way too small. But anyway, we'll talk about all, all that on Thursday. Um, yeah. So we're, right now we're still looking backwards. We're still looking backwards at Michigan State. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Matt. I mean, it's it's. It's the best best that math can do. Or I mean, I don't know if it's the best that math can do. There might be better, but it's it's what we have. It's what we have. But yeah, as as Jared said here, this is our standard and grade episode where we review last week's episode, talk about the game, and get about some grades for each position here. So let's let's start off talking about the big brother, Sparty. Sparty going down to 
Ohio State 56 to 7. When you talk about an overall just dominance game here, it, this was in full display. This was a this was a statement game yeah. for Ohio State. It was for sure. All the seas of all the season of both fans and the media just ripping on Ohio State since the Oregon loss all the way through until November and then and then it got to, oh, wait till Ohio State plays something. Wait till Ohio State plays something. Well, you played the number seven team, whether you, you agree they should be seventh or not. It was right. the number seven team here in Michigan State in dominant fashion in all, in all sides of the ball here. It was just, this was the type of game. It's, I don't remember this kind of dominance over a Power Five team since 2014 jared in the big 10 championship game um i i believe you're forgetting an an, an, an equality get an equality opponent i believe you're forgetting the end the catastrophic end of the revenge tour uh that was a very highly ranked michigan game or michigan team that got absolutely dismantled i mean i'm just saying you may have missed but, but, one. But on, on, on all sides of the ball, Ohio State did let up quite a few points in that one. This is a dominant. You won by pretty much 50 points here. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to. Either, either, either way here. Let's, let's, yeah. let's get into, let's, let's get into each position. Let's start, let's start with the highs here. Well, every position's a high here, but let's start <laughs> with the quarter. Let's, let's start with the quarterback here. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, CJ Stroud. 32 for 35. He had more touchdowns than incomplete. He had twice as many touchdowns and incomplete passes in this game. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. 432 Ka- yards. Ka- averaging 12.3. And it, they weren't they weren't oh. just like they weren't just chip passes. They were well, not. Some were, some were, but they, he he had just dime passes this game. 12.3 yards per Per completion there, that's just crazy, crazy, Deep, crazy good. Short, intermediate, sideline, middle, didn't matter. He was nailing. Like there are there are quarterbacks playing starting big time college football programs who couldn't have done that against air. Like we can talk all we want. We can talk all we want about oh well Ohio State or rather Michigan state was like the worst. And like we said it too, on the, on the, on the, we did know your enemy episode uh, that, Oh, Michigan state has the worst pass defense. Michigan state has the worst pass defense, but like that's only going by yards in in actuality. If you really look at it, if, if you look at the more advanced statistics, like, Ohio State had, or got it did it again. Michigan State didn't have that bad of a pass defense. Uh, This is from Tom Fernelli. I believe he writes for CBS. Um, Yep. We keep, they keep mentioning it on the broadcast, and I've heard it all week. So I'm going to say it. Michigan State isn't the worst pass defense in the country. It allows the most yards per game, but it ranks 56th in passing efficiency and 35th in yards per attempt. 35th in yards per attempt is not a terrible pass defense. Mm -hmm. And I'm also not going to say that, oh, guys, it's actually this pass defense is really good. Cause, cause they oh, obviously they weren't right. Like Ohio state definitely has played better in the uh, Penn state, for example, as far as pass defenses go, but also it's not nearly as bad a pass defense as the broadcast made it sound. And quite frankly, as Kyle and I made it sound on, on last Thursday's episode. So, but, but no, but knowing this Ohio state offense here, Jared, we knew that they were going to, they were going to, they were going to ball out here and, and sure they did. And yeah, gangland said it too. Yeah. And you said too. Yeah. Their efficiency. It's not bad. It's just because, Teams they had to throw the ball. They had to throw the ball, and that's kind of why Ohio State's stats, and especially the passing um, part of it, for a long time, it looked bad because teams had to play catch up. They right. had to throw the ball against Ohio State to try to to get back in it. 
All right, Kyle. So let's let's stop beating around the bush. Kyle, can we give can we give the quarterbacks? Can we give Kyle Stroud anything higher than an A plus? Unless we're going like S tier. <laughs> All right, A plus. We're going S tier. Yeah, A plus. A plus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, an A plus plus. If we can go higher, we we can go higher. All right, running backs here. <clears throat> running backs, two hundred and six yards in the game. 4.8 a pop, two touchdowns between all the running backs here. It, I, I'd say I, it's tough for me to got to be careful with the, with this rating here, just because of what Ohio state wanted to do offensively. Right. And that was air it out and air it out. They did. But when they, when they ran it on the ground, I thought they, I thought they did pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the my, averages my, are there. My, Miley, I can't talk about chop pork chop. Um, my Mayan Williams, eight point eight per carry, seven per carry for uh, Henderson. Like they're able to move the ball efficiently, and then with the second stringer, uh, Teague had almost a hundred yards and a in a touchdown. And I'm and by the way, I'm glad Coach Day did give him the ball to get that touchdown, and everyone in the stadium agreed too. <laughs> The student section audibly gasped when they threw the ball yes. instead of running <laughs> yeah. the ball that one. There it was like the the student I mean, I, section actively cheering for Ohio State not to score a touchdown in that moment. I I have a I wondered if that was completed for a touchdown, if the student section would have booed. I, I think it's a possibility. I think it's a real possibility. Uh so I mean Ohio State ran for a hundred yards in the first half. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. Their averages were great. Uh, it's just that they didn't need to. They they were yeah. destroying things. I mean, yeah, they had 100 yards rushing in the first half. Uh, they had near 400 yards th- uh, throwing in the first half. Uh, so, you know, we can't go over the top and give the running backs an A plus here because they didn't earn that. But at the same time, they I think they did exactly what was asked of them. So I think they should at least get an A for that. Yeah, that's kind of one thing. I was thinking an A, not A plus, but I thought an A overall in this game. Uh, wide receivers, same thing with the quarterback. Can we give him anything higher than an A plus for the wide receivers? It's Insane. like pretty much everything thrown their way, they caught. And, and, three... so, and some of them, and, and, and some of them too. Like, how did they catch that too? Even some of like obviously the one Olave catch where he's twisting his body all sorts yeah. of ways to try to catch that ball there. Amazing. And even the ones in the end zone where there's no room for error catches it in such an odd angle over the head, trying to catch it as he's running and barely get in the end zone too. It's amazing. We are spoiled this year with this trio of wide receivers we have and spoiled will be next year yeah, too with to those say. on the sideline. I'm not going to say it's not going to take a step backwards next year because, because it will, because like as great as the young guys are Wilson Mm -hmm. and Lave have, and Olave have experience and the next crew up don't have experience, but like, it's not going to stay, take a huge step backwards next year. Um, Mm. yeah. Uh, yeah, so in A plus, we give them an A plus only because we can't go higher for the wide yeah. receivers. All right, what about the tight ends here? Tight ends got three three catches for just over thirty yards for the game, but they paved the way for the running back for the running backs to run the game too. They did chips to give Stroud enough time to pass some of those long developing routes that the receivers ran to give them that little bit of chip to get open. I, a a minus something like that i i thought i thought overall the tight ends did what they need to they weren't going to see the ball that much just because because of how many how many is that 24 of those um catches went to went to that trio there they weren't going right. to see many of those balls coming to them so a a minus is kind of what i'm thinking for the tight ends uh yeah uh, that's fine i'm 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 good with what you said yeah and then the offensive line, uh, I actually did not see. I have to look at the stats here. I, I think I think there were a couple sacks, I think, in this game. There, there were two. 
I believe, uh, at least on Stroud. Um, they, uh, yeah, I, I, there were a couple sacks, but the, the running backs ran well. Um, I, all, Kyle, all, when it comes down to it, the offense does not go at the type of efficiency it went without. Yeah. The, the offense can't do what the offense did without the offensive line playing amazing. I don't no, care about uh, the two sacks. I don't care absolutely. about. Well, that was going to be my difference between an A and A plus <laughs> for the, for the offensive line. They, they played tremendously, tremendously. I, I don't want to see like I'm trying to pick out the little things here, but no offensive line did played tremendously here. They, yeah, you, you couldn't expect much more. And, and especially for how many times Ohio State threw the ball, uh, Stroud 35 times in, in almost one half. Yeah, I just tremendous, tremendous. I, I give the offensive line an A. They, they I'll, just... I, I'll give them an A+. Plus. All right, fine. You convinced me to an A+. Plus. <laughs> I don't think I tried very <laughs> hard. Uh, but yeah, it's this is the, this is, it's just amazing. Like I'm trying to just look at the stats here and the stats don't do justice for no. how efficient this team was here. Minus their first drive where they seemed to take their time. It, it took them over four minutes to get their first touchdown. And then it was a minute, 16 minute, 24 minute, 48, two and a half, just over two uh, under four minutes. They, they moved the ball so quick and, and even a better one. Uh, 12 plays and four plays, four plays, six plays, six plays, six plays, 10 plays. And that's, that was their entire first half right there. All, all leading to touchdowns, just efficient, efficient. And I think I saw here only two third downs, Jared, in the, in the, in the first half. Was it two for two two and third downs? Yeah. Two two for two in the third. Yeah. Two for two in the first half. That I mean that I mean that's insane in and of itself, right? Like, what was their third down efficiency? One hundred percent. That sounds insane. It's even more insane when you realize they didn't even have to try on third down. You want to talk about being ahead of the chains? You want to talk about being ahead of the chains? You know, but when when your quarterback is averaging twelve yards per attempt, not per completion, although that it would mostly be the same for Stroud since he didn't miss, but 12 yards over 12 yards per attempt is psychotic. If you want a comparison, Pete Thorne, or excuse me, Peyton Thorne, uh, (laughs) 4.4. You want a comparison, 4.4. Yeah, two for two, and that Michigan State was four for 10. Uh, And I think the other great thing about this, and we complained about this with Ohio State, especially if it seemed like it was going to be an issue for it was like three or four weeks in a row, just penalties. Ohio State was having a lot of issues, just dumb penalties in this game for all for the entire game. One penalty. Yeah. All game. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, if, and if it was Michigan state's goal to, limit Ohio state once they got down into the red zone, if that's what they were trying to do. Um, I was, I was a half a second ahead of you, Stuart. Um, Ohio state, I, how often Kyle, do we have scoring distances? I don't even feel like they were actually even in the red zone all that much. Oh, that's actually a good question. So I'm, I'm going to, I know they had a, a multiple touchdowns from, from in the red zone, but I feel like they had multiple touchdowns that were from outside Let's 20 see. yards out. So, First one, 23 yard touchdown. So, nope. Yep. Uh, second one was a 77 yard. No, no. <laughs> Next one, 43 yard. No, no. Next one was a one yard. So, one for one. Yep. The next one is a 12 yard, two for two. And then the third one was a five yard, three for three in the red zone. Yeah. Uh, Ruggles miss in the second half was, was that inside the red zone? How, how far that out of the was, kick was that? Does anyone know? That was at the 21 yard line. So uh, just ha, ha, outside. Didn't count. 
Uh, uh, no, Ruggles misses his first kick. Kyle, before we go to commercial, grade that special teams. Ruggles misses. Uh, the punter didn't. Uh, did he punt once? Maybe in the game. Maybe twice. He, he, yeah, he he had to in the um in the second uh, half once. Did once. Just once. Just once. um, we it looked Kyle. It looked like on a couple occasions, like maybe maybe Ohio state was going to break a punt return. Didn't happen. Yeah, but it didn't. So where are you, where are you grading the special teams, Kyle? I mean, I love Noah Ruggles, but it, you heard, you heard the average down. It's, it's gotta <laughs> be a, it's gotta be a B plus here. <laughs> uh, the, he did good on kickoffs. Plus. So we'll keep it a B plus yeah. and he didn't miss any extra oh, points. Yeah. Of which he had many. Yeah, the kickoffs did pretty well. Um, not not as great as they used to have been, but uh, Reed Reed back there was a is a great returner, and Haas State was able to really contain him. But right. so, yeah, I'd say B plus. All right, that's B+. good. All right, Kyle, let's do some ad reads. Um, I guess I will go first. Uh, Kyle, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I already told you who they are. Uh, an Ohio-based Marine veteran-owned small batch micro roaster Toledo area, all that. Right. Let's take a look at the coffees. Um, I think I've alluded to the back room a couple times in the, my past couple ad reads. Um, so let's let's actually talk about. Let's actually talk about the back room. Uh, we have five coffees hiding in the back room. Uh, these are under the Murder Coffee Company brand which is, I assume, a sub-company or sub-branding of the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, you have, for example, the Cereal Killer, which is a vanilla buttercream coffee. Uh, you have the Stay Awake, which is an incredibly caffeinated coffee. Then there is the Bloodbath, which is a red velvet cupcake. <laughs> uh, or is it just a red velvet cake-flavored uh, coffee. You have the Turning Blue which is a blueberry cinnamon crumble and the soulless, which is a ginger snap coffee. Uh, those are some, uh, and we have an endorsement from gangland down in the chat saying that the red velvet is crazy. Good. I mean, how, how could you go wrong? Right. It's red velvet. Who doesn't love red velvet, but there, there you go. That's a, that's a real life endorsement from one of our discord folk. So you can check out those coffees. Uh, they have a ton more flavored coffees. They have a ton of uh, standard non-flavored coffees that you can try for yourself. Uh, you can try all of those over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Again, Mad Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria in Cary this Thursday from 4 to 7. Well, let me tell you why. You should go down here. Let's 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 read some reviews here from actual customers. Here's one saying, uh, "Tried the food here for the first time. Really glad I did. Sliced brisket sandwich is one of the best I've ever had in Ohio. Whole pork was really good. Can't wait to return and try more of their food." Here's another saying, "This is the best food truck around, hands down. Barbecue smoked right there on location, and it was fresh that day." Brisket and pork is never dry and always full of flavors that melt in your mouth. The sides are also are also made that day and absolutely phenomenal. The owner and crew are top notch and very friendly. Highly rec- recommend giving them a try. To be sure to check them out again this this Thursday four to seven. Put away your dinner plans. Go get some barbecue. Play some bingo. The OLC Shrine Cafeteria. Be sure to hit up his social media for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. Okay, Kyle, let's uh, let's grade this defense. You know, Kyle, I was feeling pretty good about myself because I basically mm-hmm. kind of went on a whole thing during the Know Your Enemy show on uh, last Thursdays, essentially saying Ohio State was going to torch Michigan State through the air. And I felt like Ohio yep. State was going to take Michigan State out of the game early. You know, oh, everyone, are you afraid of Kenneth Walker? And I'm like, I, I don't think he can be in the game plan very long because I think Ohio State's going to go up big fast and they're just going to take him out. So I felt great about all of that, right? Like, just if, if you if you do a podcast or if you do anything like that and you put put stuff out there on the line, 
you put your opinion out there, it always feels good when you're right. So I felt very good about myself in, in that respect. Right, so, but but I have to say, totally underestimated Ohio, either underestimated Ohio State's defense or overestimated the Michigan State offense. I I said I also said on the show last Thursday that you know Michigan State was going to definitely you know break that seventeen point curse that they've had inside the shoe for the last however many years it's been that Michigan State was for sure going to score more than 20 points and that that this was the best Michigan State offense we've had in the shoe in forever and all of that. So I I also said all that stuff, right? So I had I had really high expectations for the offense. The defense, I was expecting Michigan State to perform at least somewhat well and my goodness, the defense yeah. was lights out. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think you and I both said that Michigan State's going to get their points. They're going to get. Yeah. They're going to get some points. They're, 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 they're they were a, a decent offense, well, more than decent. They're, they're pretty. They're a pretty good offense. They were able to move the ball, and a lot of it because of uh, Kenneth Walker. So we, we thought, we thought, oh yeah, Michigan State will get maybe two. We'll get like a three scores, something like that. But forty nine to nothing at halftime. Yeah. You only you only let up seventy seven in the air, thirty nine on the ground at halftime, and you limited Kenneth Walker to only five um, carries for twenty four yards. Yeah, it was a total that's dismantle. The, that's the stat right there. You you Ohio State, and really Ohio State's best defense was their offense scoring yeah. so many points. That one hundred percent. That's what it was. That's what it was, and then they forced. Peyton Thorne to to get them back in the game and he went eight for twenty six in that first half. So maybe maybe if we're grading here the the defense the defense has to thank the offense for getting getting it up that that much. Yeah, for but sure. Yes, no, and no, no, no. Absolutely, Stuart. Yeah, I'm not going to take away how awesome defense played because they made the tackles when they need to. Like there was a couple of plays when when um, Walker got out and Ohio State was able to tackle them, he was going to. We, I thought he was going to get his yards, but man, they they stopped them when they needed to. I mentioned before they went four for ten, Michigan State that is on third downs, getting 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 critical stops when they need to and getting that ball back to Ohio State. They were, yeah, it was complete dismantle. Stuart, he he was not he was not belittling the defense by any means. He was simply saying that Ohio State's offense made Michigan State's offense completely one dimensional. And it's yeah. th- did Ohio State's defense completely shut down Kenneth Walker? Yes, but also Michigan State only gave him the ball six times. He didn't have an opportunity really even to go, and that's because they were knocked out of the game so early and Michigan state became one dimensional and it's a much, much easier defense to defense, a much better offense to defense um, when they're one dimensional. And but that's still yeah. huge props to Ohio state's defense because even in, in, you know, in September, Ohio state's defense still couldn't, still couldn't stop a team when they were one dimensional because the past defense was that inept. So huge props to the defense for how far they have come because they've come very, very far. No, absolutely. Absolutely here. So let's, let's get to it. The let's, let's rate them here. Defensive line. You got to give them a plus you, you shut down their running rushing attack here. They totaled 66 yards for the game. And and I mentioned like in the first half, thirty nine yards in that first half, complete complete just wall. I, I gotta get you gotta give the defensive line an A. It's it's a yeah. complete dominance I, I, here. I, I would go even A plus. I mean, you consider the pass pressure that we saw. By the way, like the defensive line alone batted down like four balls. Yes. Um, yeah, Matthew oh, Matthew Matthew, and, beat Matthew me to it down in the chat. Yeah. Um. They. Uh, you had a ton of pressure from from both uh, Tyreek Smith and from uh, Zachary Harrison. 
I, I thought that Steel Chambers played a really good job. I thought Haskell Garrett had an exceptional game. Um, and even later in the game, later in the game, your your two stud freshmen play pretty well too. Uh, excuse me, three. How dare you disrespect Tyleek Williams? <laughs> yes, sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah the I yeah the defensive line was lights out, Kyle. I think we need to bump him up to that A plus. All right, fine. That's fine. Linebackers here, Jared. Yeah, Eichenberg played a had a really good game he here. Everyone's he too hard. Very everybody, good game. Everybody is too hard on Eichenberg. They yeah he had a. He had probably probably his best game at Ohio State so far. Like I think I think this was his complete game, most complete game he's had yeah. so far. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, people were really really hard on him. Why? Because he was a brand new starter. He's a brand new starter who was not playing ex- exceptional in his very first starts. Gee. I wonder if that reminds anyone of how hard they were being on CJ Stroud. Haters of mm. CJ Stroud, please stand up. Yeah. Uh, gangling, uh, make yourself gangling, known. Uh, apologize publicly. <laughs> I see you staring. Yeah. Apologize <laughs> publicly. And by the way, anyone who's dumb enough right now to being like, well, Ohio State's going to have a heck of a quarterback battle this offseason, stop it. Stop yeah. it! You're Gangling. you're revealing I'm not, even, I'm, I'm not even going to I'm not even going to blame Eichenberg for him um, looking bad on that one run. It's just Walker. Walker is just that good of a running back, and he made Eichenberg. He looked well. He was already stumbling bad. off of a block, so it's not even like he was sure footed going yeah. into there. Yeah, but but still, great game. Deep uh, linebackers played Excel here. I can't I can't think of anything else lower than A plus for them too. They did exactly what they needed to in this game. As yeah, well, Chambers like had a linebacker. great game. Um if we count Hickman, Hickman had a great game. Um I thought Cody Simon played well. Uh I yeah, I, I mean I was thinking more of a straight A in this case, but Kyle, if you want to go A plus, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Corners here. Corners, so you, you would think you would think here, Jared. Oh, well, they they really limited Michigan State uh, to only sixty six yards. They got out ahead. Oh, so Ohio State's going to let up a lot of yards in the air. Nope, not not the no. case here. Only one hundred fifty eight total for this game, and had Michigan State under fifty percent completion for the game. Uh, what? I th- yeah, and they're they're without seven banks in this game. Um, I, uh, they, Denzel Burke ends up missing some time because he hurt his shoulder. He ended up coming back in the game briefly before then leaving again, just because the game was over. He's already hurt. Why not? You know, why not preserve him a bit? Right. Um, but he did it, but he, he played after he went out. Not, not much, but, but he played after he went out. So I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, too concerned about Burke for this weekend. Um, but no, I thought, I thought the cornerbacks played completely light lights out. Um, and by the way, like they're playing, they're playing one of the better wide receivers in the big 10 Jalen Reed held him to nothing. Two receptions, 28 yards. Uh, and, and some of those plays where they somehow made the catch it's just that's just the type of play that they ran, and if the quarterback saw that they were playing tight man, you throw it back shorter or you throw it behind them, right when they're going to make the cut and the ball is right there. It's you can't ask for any better coverage on a lot of those passes. It is just that's just how the play call ended up. Defense did what they need to. Is just a sometimes sometimes a better offensive play is is just going to outmatch anything you do defensively yeah um hey, hey hey austin one we're only talking about the cornerbacks right now not the defensive backs as a whole and two peyton thorne 14 of 36 for 158 yards 4.4 per attempt and yes of course the defensive line 
played a huge role in that. Of course they do. The defense plays as a whole. Yes. Well, but also, but also, yes, maybe also one of the reasons why the defensive line played so well is because the defense, the defensive backs weren't giving easy outlets to the wide receivers and they were forcing Peyton Thorne to look to his second read. Yep. I no, I thought the corners played extremely well, especially being down seven banks, especially missing Burke for a portion of the game. Cam Brown had one of his best games as a Buckeye. I think in this game, I give him an a. Yeah. I'd give him a solid a here too. I was hoping to see a turnover here, or there with, with Cam Brown bad Peyton. One. If if Cam if Cam Brown had held on to that, maybe it's an A plus. Still still wasn't one. But yeah, they were locked down corners here at solid A. Safeties here, Jared. Safeties. Um, you know, I, I found myself not thinking about the safeties too much, which I think is exactly what you want from the safeties. Um that, that's exactly what you want, right? You you want <laughs> okay. to not notice the safeties that much. Uh, I thought Court Court Williams had a really good game, especially, you know, it's probably more so in the second half than in the first half. Um, I I give him, and then quite frankly, you know, as we always say, we grade based off of expectations. We have talked, yeah, I I said that, didn't I, Ganglin? Uh, Court Williams mostly played in the second half, but he still played well. Um, so like I said, we always grade based off of expectations and we have made no secret of the fact that we don't think a lot of the safety group right now that we yep. we have called them the weak link on the team on the defense at the very least before so based off of how low our expectations are i think they earned an a in this game for simply uh not being not noticeable letting, yeah not not letting up big plays uh what what is it here i'm trying, just looking at trying to look at the big Trey Mosley's one reception, I think, was the one big yes, play. Yes, that, that was that was the longest one. Other than that, it accounted for of... pretty much a third of Thorne's yards. Yeah, Trey Mosley's well, one much... play accounted for a third of Thorne's yards. So how many? How many? How many plays did they do? do, 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 do. I believe yeah, so, so, Matthew. Um, Court Williams had. So of the of the fifty nine plays, fifty nine plays that yeah, ta- Tommy Eichenberg st- and and Court Williams both had seven tackles tied for the mm-hmm. most. Yeah, uh, of the fifty nine plays that Michigan State ran, only two plays went more than twenty yards. Only two, and one of those one of those was twenty one yards. So there you go. Very very good. Didn't really let anything pass them. Yeah, defensive back or safeties get an A too. Just for what Jared said. Yeah. We already said special teams gets a B plus because the one missed field goal there gets them lowers that to a B plus still everything else about the special teams did exactly what they needed to in this game. Coaching. Uh, Coaching. How, how, how can you watch this game and not just hand out another A plus? Like this is all, this is all coaching and this is, this is, about the season as a whole, you can't look at this team and not see the growth that the defensive side made. You can't look at the quarterbacks because, or you can't look at the quarterbacks without thinking about coach day sticking with CJ Stroud back when everyone else was complaining. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's the season as a whole. It's the growth that this team has experienced since the loss to Oregon too now, um, and also just the game plan, like it's just seeing the, the, the weakness in the Michigan state pass defense and not being afraid to exploit it, not thinking, well, no, we have to establish the run. No, no, no. We're just going to throw the ball. We have the best wide receivers in the country. We have one of the best quarterbacks in the country and you can't stop the pass. We are going to dismantle you and that's okay. And we're going to keep our foot down too. Yep. You know, absolutely. we will score 49 points in the first half and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last thoughts here before we get to some ask sleep cast questions here, Jared, anything last marks here about, about this um, Michigan state game. Uh, it's, it's, this is the game that everyone wants. 
Yeah, this that's is it. Game. This is the everyone... game that everyone wants to see. This is this is enjoy it because it's not always like this. You know, they're not going to do this to Michigan next week. Uh, Michigan's a better team than this. And yes, I know Michigan State beat me. I, I know, but enjoy these when they happen. Enjoy the afterglow of it. This does not happen. We, we expect this to happen every week. It doesn't happen every week. Enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Yes, absolutely. All right. All right, let's get to some Ask Sloopcast questions here. Jared Gangland asks us, is it time to start discussing the curse placed on Michigan State by Archie Griffin? I would argue that the the the, the curse was not placed by Archie, but rather was was placed by Connor Cook himself. I that that that's my first exception. It's not the curse of Archie. It's it's the it's the curse curse of Connor. So that that's my first exception. Uh, but yeah, I yeah we can talk about it. Yeah, no, the Michigan State is it's, cursed. Yeah, I mean, it's better. It's better that it's better sounding that it came from an Ohio a, a alumni from Ohio State that placed the curse. It, it just sounds better. No, I disagree because Archie's a nice guy, and I don't think he would do that. <laughs> Michigan State yeah, cursed yeah. themselves. So, Not to mention, tell, it tell just that, it's phonetically that. it phonetically sounds better. The curse of Connor Cook. Come on, that just sounds good, right? Don't 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 tell that to people who had to try to tackle him, saying he's a nice guy. <laughs> well, that's a fair point. All right, Nomad asks us. I'm I'm just waking up. Did we have a game yesterday? Yeah, yeah. sort of, sort of. <laughs> uh, with Michigan State, Teton, and not I rivals do. combined. I do combined Gameland. combined for two and twenty against. Ohio State in the CFP area, are we on solid ground as a program? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say that Ohio State's on solid ground as a program, yeah. Yeah. All right, Duncan from the Discord here. ESPN announcers made reference to Ohio State fans not being loud and leaving early multiple times on Saturday. We all remember growing up that year, the only one allowed to say bad things about your family since I have to word this que- word this as a question f those guys uh i i okay first and foremost i don't uh i don't pay a i don't retain a lot of what the announcers say but i i specifically remember chris fowler complimenting Ohio state fans for still being there that late into a blowout. Like I do specifically remember so, that. Yeah. Two, two um, things, two things that come, two things that come up. So I, I think it. you maybe may have misheard Duncan. I remember, I specifically remember Fowler like being impressed with how full the stadium still was in like deep into the third quarter, if not the fourth quarter. And they were commenting yeah. on the student section, really wanting Master Teague to get a touchdown. Um, yep. They, I, I thought they were being very complimentary of Ohio State fans. That's my memory of it. Yes. Yeah, that was two things. One, you said there about the student section wanting Teague. So the student section and a lot of other people are still there. And two, after the game, Michigan State head coach Mel Tucker quoted saying, about Ohio State, they get up on you and get the crowd into it, and then it's a wrap. He, in <laughs> the, the opposing coach said the crowd really got into it. Uh, by the know. way, uh, Matthew, who uh, may or may not be a student, uh, says some of us may have been waiting to rush the field only to find out it wasn't going to happen. So th- there is a possible a possible explanation as to why the student section was so full late into the game. <laughs> that, that, that's a possible, that, that's a possible, uh, yeah. that's and then, possible. And then the last question from Stuart, is our offense our best defense in this game? Yes. Honestly, because you, Stuart, you made, yeah, you made, you made, you made, yep. And you made Michigan state one dimensional and the dimension that they did not want to be. So yes, in this case, yes. He's not happy with you. By the way, Stuart, I think that one's my favorite of these slap gifts. 
Uh, all, right. all right, Jared, that is it. That is all we have for today. Why don't you take us out? Uh, yeah, I uh, want to encourage everyone to come uh, visit our Discord server where we have lots of fun on game day and all the other all the other days. And uh, that's it, uh, Kyle. That, that's all I feel like doing as far as... Uh, oh, you know what? Go go visit our, our merch store. We're both wearing merch right now. This is what my Michigan... One of my Michigan Hate Week shirts. It says, when you ride alone, you ride with Harbaugh, um, which is a... Um, a reference to an old World War II propaganda shirt about uh, encouraging Americans to save gas by suggesting that if you aren't carpooling, you're aiding Hitler. Yes, I compared, I compared Harbaugh to Hitler. Come yeah. at me. So yeah, do you do your part to save Michigan and save gas? That's that's I guess what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> Gangland says, well, they they, bo they both do start with H. You know, I fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, that, that works for me. Uh, so does Hydra. I'll throw that out there. So, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, basketball news here. Ohio State lost lost the first game of the season to Xavier, 71 to 65. And this week, there's only one game, and that's Monday as this episode is being released against Seton Hall. Hopefully, Ohio State can get back on the back in the winning column before they play their ACC matchup the following Tuesday against the Blue Devils. There you go. Uh, tonight's ending band, Kyle, uh, will be a Columbus-based band by the name of Snarls. Uh, Snarls uh, just released a new album. Um, I'm, I'm looking up the name of that album right now. Um, they just released this album, so I'm going to play a new song off of this album. Uh, try, oh, sorry, I, I thought I had this open already. Uh, the name of this album is called uh, What About Flowers? What About Flowers from the band Snarls. I played uh, one of the songs off of this earlier this month, but this, this album's coming out, or just came out, rather, on November 12th, so I wanted to give them another quick plug Brand new album out just a little over a week. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Snarls. Snarls.